Porsche continues the tradition of the four-cylinder flat engines that were used in the Porsche 718 mid-engine sports cars that won numerous races back in 1950s and 1960s, among them being the legendary Targa Florio and Le Mans. The centerpiece of the new model series is the newly developed four-cylinder flat engine with turbocharging. The 718 Boxer developed 300 horsepower from 2 liters of engine displacement, while the 718 Boxster S gets 350 horsepower. Thus, the new 718 Boxster models sprint even faster. The 718 Boxster with PDK and the Sport Chrono package sprints from 0 to 100 km per hour in 4.7 seconds. The 718 Boxster S with the same equipment completes the distance, completes it in 4.2 seconds. The top speed of the 718 Spider is 275 km per hour and the 718 Boxster S has a top speed of 285 km per hour. If we take a look at the very early and fairly early days, the 718 was successful in the 1950s and 60s with a four-cylinder engine. Today, when you sit in the new 718 Boxster, start the engine and drive the car, you'll see that, compared to the previous model, the gains made in acceleration, top speed and overall performance are extremely impressive thanks to turbocharging and the higher torque. To see that the four-cylinder concept works well in sporty vehicles, we need to look no further than the LMP1. Porsche has successfully employed a four-cylinder engine in this car. Two engines are now available in the new Boxster vehicles, i.e. the 718. One is the basic engine with a 2-litre displacement and 300 horsepower. This is 35 horsepower more than before. And in the S model, the top engine version, we have a 2.5-litre four-cylinder flat engine with 350 horsepower, also 35 horsepower more than the previous model. The turbocharging technology enables us to reduce displacement while improving performance. And, this is what's really great, we're also able to decrease the number of cylinders. So we can leave out two cylinders while reducing displacement and still improving performance. The welcome side effect of less displacement and fewer cylinders is lower fuel consumption because you also decrease the friction within the engine. We achieve an optimal balance between improved performance and greater efficiency by turbocharging technology combined with a lot of small measures related to the overall engine concept. We've designed the combustion process so that we now use a central injection system, meaning the injectors for direct petrol injection are now positioned centrally between the intake and exhaust valves, close to the spark plug. This facilitates very good fuel induction, good efficiency, good raw emission emissions, everything that makes for a good combustion process. In our turbocharging technology, we have a wastegate turbocharger for the 2-litre engine, as is also used in the new 911. And the 2.5-litre B4 engine has variable turbine geometry. This technology is also employed in the 911 Turbo and has proven very successful in this model. Now we have specifically adapted this technology to the B4 engine. We needed a larger turbocharger and so we are now implementing a larger version of this variable turbine geometry exclusively for the four-cylinder flat engine. This was also a goal in optimizing the overall system. Here we are talking about air induction. This means drawing induction air into the engine while keeping losses, flow losses, to a minimum. 
and implementing the entire compression path from the turbocharger and through the intercooler with minimal flow losses. We also wanted to optimize the exhaust system to ensure that exhaust paths are as short as possible, so that the exhaust gas flow accelerates the turbines as quickly as possible after exiting the cylinder, which leads to precisely this turbo engine response. It's about shaping the engine response to ensure that the driver senses the vehicle responding to even slight movements of the accelerator pedal. Adjusting the guide vanes causes the turbines to increase speed more rapidly, allowing the 2.5-litre engine to attain its maximum torque at a low 1,900 revolutions, despite just only one turbocharger and 2.5 litres of engine displacement. For driving comfort, we've employed a totally new engine mount concept. This is what we now call four-point mounting. As we can see here, this means that the engine is now mounted in the vehicle at the cylinder heads on both sides. Previously, we had central mounting here at the middle front, meaning we now have two switchable engine mounts on the engine itself and two more at the back on the gearbox. This facilitates a very good level of driving comfort, but most important, of course, is how the engine itself produces a feeling of smooth running, how it behaves. In this context, a four-cylinder flat engine has one simple advantage over ordinary four-cylinder engines. It doesn't need a balancer shaft. The aspect of sounds, both internal and external, was a major challenge for engineers. But you can be certain that we've managed it and hear it too. Its B4 engine gives the 718 Boxster a typically full Porsche sports car sound. Essentially, the work of the acoustics department begins before we get the vehicles, i.e. with a blank sheet of paper. We start right from the outset, participating in the vehicle's design and its acoustic layout. This does not only involve the engine and engine acoustics, rather the acoustics of the entire vehicle as well. This means that we work on, optimize, reduce or completely mask every noise that's produced in the car, both desirable and undesirable sounds. After all, we want a comfortable car that you can sometimes take on a long trip or drive to the bakery shop to fetch your bread in the mornings. Therefore, we need a certain amount of sound insulation, sound optimization and, of course, maximum emotional appeal. Our aim is definitely to be at the very forefront and to develop and build a car that has a significant emotional impact with all of its systems, not just with sound alone, but with sound as a tool. One challenge with the 718 Boxster was to further develop the previous model, i.e. make it a bit more comfortable, a bit sportier. We also have a new generation of engines, a turbo engine with four cylinders now, and it was a challenge to integrate this engine into the vehicle and develop a suitable, coherent vehicle concept. An engine must be a good fit to the vehicle, and the sound must be a good fit to both the vehicle and the engine, and that was the challenge of this project. The acoustics of all engine components are also part of the development and layout. This is why we're involved from the very outset in engine development as well, so that we can have an influence on the mechanical noises and noise disturbances and configure the design of the basic engine to ensure that no disturbing noises are produced. And finally, to develop the induction and exhaust systems to enable us to then produce a typical Porsche sound. Traditionally, the engine and the engine's peripheral components play a key role in the sound experience. In other words, the exhaust system on the one hand and induction system on the other. Now we've turbocharged the engine, so we already have a factor that muffles the sound somewhat on the exhaust and induction sides. And we have a reduced number of cylinders, but we still have a flat engine. 
Another important aspect is that the design of the exhaust system is now asymmetrical so that we can make the sound pattern different from that of an ordinary four-cylinder engine. Up to now, we've had a flat four-cylinder, but there are a two-liter version, a two-and-a-half-liter version and an optional sport exhaust system. The basic challenge is not just to produce one single sound pattern, but several very characteristic ones. In my opinion, you won't find another four-cylinder in the world that sounds like this. The 718 is an excellent starting point. We are very, very successful in this market segment with the Boxster, a purebred sports car, a mid-engine sports car. But of course, our aim is to become even sportier, to give the vehicle even greater agility, to make the vehicle even easier to drive, to give the customer a positive feeling, an enjoyable motoring experience beyond that of the previous model. We've pushed ahead the tyre development. We've developed a completely new range of tyres. We've also changed the steering ratio to make the vehicle even more agile in response to steering inputs. And we've further optimised precise distribution of structural stiffness in the suspensions. And now, of course, the steering also interacts with the suspension system, the front end, the structures found there and the tyres. Here, too, it's important to attain an optimal solution by attention to detail. We need an appropriate level of steering precision for straight tracking. And steering response must be just right, so that precise steering inputs elicit immediate vehicle responses and we can get a favorable steering torque gradient. This involves a very large amount of fine-tuning work in relation to the interplay of many individual components. The main leap forward that we're now making in the 718 compared to its predecessor is that the steering is approximately 10% more direct meaning that the car is more dynamic and agile in response to steering inputs and it's much more fun to drive. The new 718 Boxster is the successful sequel to its predecessor. During its development, we focused on three main points. The first is advanced development of performance and efficiency. The second is enhancing the design to create a more contemporary appearance. And the third is significant improvements with regard to the general theme of connectivity in the car. The real challenge here was to give the vehicle even more individual character and demonstrate the technical merits of the vehicle even more clearly. The first focal point I mentioned is the engine. Flat engines as we had previously, but with four cylinders in the future. New, it is turbocharged in the basic model as well as in the S version. The second major technical improvements have been made to the chassis. Now we've got more direct steering in the car, 10% more direct than in the previous model. For the first time, we're able to offer a controlled sport suspension that is set 20 millimeters lower in the vehicle. And the third major point is the theme of connectivity. We've got a new PCM 4.0, as we call it, which can implement everything required for connectivity in the Porsche Connect apps in the vehicle. Our process always begins with the vehicle's proportions. And this is the first item that we have focused more intensively on in development. For example, we have addressed the aspect of wide and low even more. The wings are lower. That was the first big job. The second job was to implement this aspect with styling elements, the headlights and especially the taillights. Primarily, we simply did this to create more individuality, but we also emphasize the aspect of width and the low stance of the vehicle on the road. 
wenn man sich die Front vom Fahrzeug anschaut. If you look at the front of the vehicle, along the midline, for instance, you see this radius roughly where the bonnet meets the bumper. And it has been moved a few millimeters closer to the road. The very slender front lights and the air inlets at the front end have been moved further to the sides. All of these small details make the vehicle appear even lower and wider. And it's exactly the same at the rear, where the rear wing has reduced height. The tail lights have been widened, and this band, which now integrates our three-dimensional Porsche badge, also emphasizes the aspect of width. These are all very small, subtle details, which, when combined, give the impression that the car sits even lower and wider on the road. Und breiter auf der Straße. Wir haben die Anforderung, dass unser Boxster. It was vital that our Boxster, the classic roadster with its futuristic design, should not have an entirely new exterior look just because it was getting a turbo engine. And so our challenge was to see how we could get a turbo engine into this roadster and satisfy its induction air and cooling air needs with the existing inlets. Another problem was to determine how we could incorporate the air filter, the entire induction path and the intercooler in a very compact way on the engine, so that the total engine size would be no larger than the naturally aspirated six-cylinder engine that was previously installed in the Boxster. Regarding the interior, it's always important for us to have an interior create an atmosphere that gives the driver and the front passenger a good feeling about sitting in the vehicle. This was our focus, but we focus primarily on the aspect of communication. One example is the screen in the middle of the center console where we now have a glass look.